When lean people go on very low carbohydrate diets, they may see dramatic increases in their LDL cholesterol to levels of 200, 300, or even 500 milligrams per deciliter or more. Our recent cohort study demonstrated an inverse association between body mass and LDL cholesterol for persons on a low carbohydrate diet. In other words, the leaner subjects were, the higher their LDL cholesterol across a population level. Notably, when these increases in LDL do occur, they are often further associated with increases in HDL cholesterol alongside low levels of triglycerides. This triad of high LDL and HDL cholesterol with low triglycerides is most pronounced in a phenotype termed lean mass hyperresponders. In this hypothesis paper, we describe the lipid energy model, a model that attempts to explain the mechanisms around why these changes take place, particularly with lean mass hyperresponders. It details the relevance of carbohydrate restriction, the dynamics of mobilizing fat, and how all these factors can ultimately result in substantial changes to cholesterol levels. In the lipid energy model, reduction in dietary carbohydrates and depletion of liver glycogen results in a greater demand for fat as a metabolic fuel. This brings about a number of hormonal changes, such as reduced insulin and leptin, which in turn triggers an increase in lipolysis and release of non-esterified fatty acids into the bloodstream. In addition to heightened use of these fatty acids by tissues throughout the body, there is a greater rate of uptake by the liver. An increase of ketogenesis occurs for production of ketone bodies. However, under these conditions, the model posits there is a likewise greater rate in synthesis of triglycerides from the increased fatty acid pool within liver cells. Increased rates of triglyceride synthesis in the liver leads to increased rates of hepatic assembly and secretion of triglyceride-rich VLDL. Importantly, this increased VLDL secretion is coupled with increased rates of their turnover by lipoprotein lipase in the periphery. This provides both greater repletion of fat stores to compensate for their higher rate of release and more rapid delivery of fatty acids to oxidative tissues such as the heart and skeletal muscles to fuel activity. The dynamics of how lipoprotein lipase is regulated, particularly in the context of low body fat and changes in dietary composition, are detailed in the manuscript. But simply stated, this model centers on the high turnover of triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, particularly VLDL. This high VLDL turnover results in three major outcomes, more remodeling of VLDL to LDL as it donates lipids, more fat fuel taken up by peripheral tissues, and more surface remnants of VLDL, including cholesterol, taken up by acceptor HDL particles. This explains the common profile we observe in lean mass hyperresponders. Both VLDL and LDL are part of the same lineage of ApoB-containing lipoproteins, so more secretion and turnover of VLDL into LDL could result in higher LDL cholesterol. Given the turnover also liberates surface components of VLDL with cholesterol, and these are picked up by HDL particles, it's likewise unsurprising to see higher serum HDL cholesterol as well. And finally, lower triglycerides are the intrinsic result of this turnover that generates the parallel increases in LDL cholesterol and HDL cholesterol. To be certain, the lipid energy model is not a proven theory nor is it meant to describe all possible influences that can contribute to changes in LDL cholesterol on low-carbohydrate diets. However, it is a useful framework in that it makes direct and testable predictions that can be evaluated by future experiments, as detailed in the manuscript. And as a final point, we welcome collaboration and testing of the model's core components by anyone interested in these ideas. We hope further consideration and study on the lipid energy model may not only provide insight into the phenomenon of the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, but also into the broader dynamics of human lipid metabolism. Thank you for watching, and please help advance this research by sharing our paper and sharing this video.